Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. This week, inspired by Sky Art's Portrait Artist of the Year, I'm going to do a real-time demo of a portrait painting of actor Jacob Fortune Lloyd. So over the last 18 months or so, I've been gradually developing my portrait painting style and Portrait Artist of the Week was a, you know, a great boost for me from that point of view. It really inspired me to you know, paint portraits on a regular basis again after, after a gap of quite a few years. Most of those portraits, if not all of them actually, were either head only or head and shoulders. And yeah, that was partly the way Portrait Artist of the Week was set up. But I'm becoming more and more interested in the idea of painting the full figure, but not only that, starting to capture moments which are intermittent moments between the conventional seated or standing poses that we often see for portraits. So for this week, I've chosen uh, a little still from the video footage where Jacob is actually clapping. And, you know, we'll, we'll get into that, but also for the future, you know, going forward, I'm going to look into trying to capture the way people move in some kind of way, I think. I think that's my plan going forward for my portrait painting, but we'll see how that goes. Anyway, on to the demo. So I've started out with my A2 mixed media paper and I did a first drawing just freehand using an orange watercolour marker pen. And when I did that, I was fairly happy with the figure drawing, but I hadn't captured the likeness at all and I felt the head was too small for the body. So my original intention was to enlarge the head, but when I went back round with the purple, I actually ended up keeping the head more or less the same size, you know, obviously correcting quite a lot of the features. And then I ended up having to change the scale of pretty much everything else. So, um, you know, fairly happy now with the likeness and the drawing, but I'm going to start out by adding some interactive acrylics and get some flesh tones in right from the start. So I've got some interactive acrylic on my palette. I've got a little bit of burnt umber there in the corner, cadmium red, ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow light, and then I've got three uh, blobs of tinting white. So I've got a patch of the yellow here, and I'm going to take some of the tinting white and thoroughly mix that in with the yellow. So we get a paler version of that cad yellow. And then having done that, I'm just going to take a little corner of the cadmium red that you can see there, and I'm going to thoroughly mix that in. With all of that pale yellow. And we'll perhaps just get a tiny bit more. Again, you can see I'm hardly using any of the red. But we'll mix that in thoroughly. And then we can just hold that up to the uh, to the paper. And, you know, it's probably not quite the right colour, but it's not too far out in terms of tone. So then if we wanted some highlights, we can just add white. And if we want to go darker, we can add some more blue, red and possibly the burnt umber. But to begin with, at least we've got something we can get going with. So sticking with that same brush, the main thing really is to cover the white paper. And you can see that as I do that, it really is looking rather yellowy. And under certain lighting conditions, that might be fine, but I want to go a little more pink. So I'm a little more in keeping with the reference. So again, I've just grabbed a little bit of that red and adding that to that same mix. So let's put a bit down here. 
And it's a small adjustment, but I think that's rather better. So I'm just going to add just a touch more of the red. Now, the great things with these acrylics are, you know, you can just gently spray both palette and painting with water and that keeps them workable more, more or less indefinitely if you keep doing that. So uh, here we go. That's it. So that's a bit more like it. It's probably not quite right, but, you know, it's good enough for us to get going. So as we apply the paint, I'm not gobbing it on, you know, really, really thickly. But I am making sure I get a pretty decent coverage. And in general, unless I scrub, you know, very hard, those watercolour marker drawing lines that I've put down, in general, they stay put fairly well. And that's helpful for me because um, you can see that it's smudged a bit there. Um, that's helpful for me because then I can, you know, refer to those later when I come to the more detailed bits of the painting. So I often guide the brush in a direction which mirrors the contours of the thing I'm painting. But for this, uh, you know, I am, I am doing that a little bit, but I'm not overly concerned with that at the moment. I just want to get rid of that white paper. So that's the face blocked in. And then we need to do something similar for the arms. Now the paint under the you know current um, conditions, the paint's going on really quite smoothly, but on a hotter, drier day, um, if you find that you know it's not, then you can just spray the surface of the paper with water as well before you add any paint. And that really does help the paint glide um, across the surface of the painting. Now that thumb, I'm not convinced I've got quite the right length, but um, we'll trust the drawing more or less for now and uh, fix things later if need be. And while I'm painting away here, you can see I'm working fairly quickly. I've taken a reasonable amount of care with my drawing, which doesn't doesn't mean it's correct, but you know I feel it's not too bad. But there are areas, you see I had a line there and a line there for that part of the upper arm. So I am still referring to my reference as I paint away here. Just to check, you know, which of the lines was the better one. And you can see that when it comes to the hands at this early stage, both drawing and painting, I'm really treating them as little more than mittens. So no fingers have been drawn or anything like that. So now that we have a mid-tone established, I'm just going to keep the paint on both the painting and palette workable using the water spray bottle. And then the next stage is I'm going to stick with the same brush, but I'm just going to add some extra white to just the left hand patch of that area of mid tone that I already have going on the palette. OK, so now we can go back into the painting and start to add some lighter areas, but we're still not kind of, you know, getting into detail. And sticking with a reasonably large brush, and obviously if my painting was much smaller, then my large brush would probably be smaller as well. And equally, if my painting was bigger, you go bigger with the brush. But for this size of painting, uh, I would say when I'm yeah, for painting a face, this is a pretty big brush. So 
what I'm doing now is adding in some highlights and I am being more aware this time of the contours of the face as I apply the paint. But I'm really just looking at the face and trying to, almost trying to forget that I'm painting a face and instead thinking of it as a pattern of shapes. And I'm just trying to look for the lighter shapes. So if there's a highlighted area in any way, anything more than what I would consider a mid-tone, then I'm putting down this lightened version of the first colour that we used. And we can continue with that technique on the arms as well. Now I've got to be a little bit careful here because in my reference, because I've captured it from a still frame of a video, um, the face looks way darker than the arms, or I think it's yeah, more accurate to say the arms are somewhat bleached out in my image. And I don't want to replicate that effect, so I'm probably going to just copy the tonal values that I've got for the most part. On in the face, the, the tonal values I have in the face I'll copy as I move down to the arms. But the same idea of sh shapes of light still applies. Now within those lighter shapes there are still even brighter areas, so keeping our treatment nice and simple for the moment just adding some more of the tinting white to that same patch of highlight colour that I had before, sticking with the same brush. And now what I'm going to do is go back around the painting and just look at the highlights I've put down and see if there are any areas within those. That paint's gone down a little bit thick perhaps, but we'll, we'll stay, stick with it. See if there are any areas within those which are lighter still. But again, without trying trying to avoid being too fussy. So as you can hopefully see, I'm just using the corner or the very end of the brush in places to pick out some of these shapes. And if at any stage I find I'm struggling to replicate a particular shape from the reference, that probably means um, I'm starting to get into too much detail too early. Again, we can come down to the arms and look for those lighter areas within the light patch we've put down already. Next thing I want to do is to add some shadows to the same areas that we've been working on. So again, just keeping the paint active with a quick spray of the water bottle. And then if I look at the left hand side of the face, the shadow is quite purpley. So let's begin by taking some of the blue and mixing it into the right hand edge of that mid-tone colour that we had. And then that's gone a bit green, so we'll put a little bit of red in. I've switched to a slightly smaller brush now, it's still a flat brush, just to, um, how can I hold that so you can see it, hopefully that's pretty good, um, just to 
give me a little bit more control. So here we go. We'll go in and tackle the shadows on the face again. We're still avoiding detail at this uh, relatively early stage. So if I squint at the sitter, this area is in quite a bit of darkness. as is the area above that eye. And now that it's on the painting, the, and, and in fact on the palette, it looks pretty brown. So I'm just adding a bit more red to the mixture and a bit more blue. And we'll see if that looks a bit more in keeping with what's going on. That's a little bit better, I think. Still not quite ideal, but um, you know, tone is, is much more important than colour at this, this stage in proceedings. So I still feel it's a little bit dark, though, for what I want to do elsewhere. So there's that colour. So this is part of the reason I've kept the, the mid-tone available. I can just go back in and lighten things up a little bit by mixing my shadow colour with the mid-tone colour that I've got left over. So let's go to the neck. And we've got a almost tri triangular shadow under there. And this cheek is in shadow. There's a shadow coming across from the nose. The eyebrow is dark. It's not really shadow, but it is dark. And I just messed up the line of that eyebrow, but we'll correct that later. This earlobe is dark here and in there. And then the rest of the shadow here is a different color to what I've got, but it, it's really more of a mid-tone. So I'm just going to leave that for the moment. And I think what I am going to do, though, is just come in here on this cheek and the left side of the forehead. And just blend some of that darker color I used before. But now we can go down to the arm, put in a bit of color there. Sorry, a bit of shadow there, I should have said. And then there's a bit of shadow here. on the elbow. There's a line of shadow under the forearm there. Perhaps just a touch there on the thumb. There on the thumb as well. I think that's probably all I'm going to do in terms of that shadow colour at the moment. So back to the big brush and I'm going to come in and grab a big dollop of um, the tinting white. I've cleaned the brush. Touch of the cadmium red. And I plan on using this for uh, the t-shirt. And again, it's not a perfect match, but that's not too far out as an initial colour for the T-shirt, I don't think. So uh, in this case, I'm actually going to just spray the surface of the paper before I um, apply the paint. So let's uh, think about the direction in which the cloth is falling over the person's body. Whoops, and that was a mistake. See if I can lift off a bit of that pink. Well, that, that worked not too badly, actually. There's still a bit there, but I'll be able to cover that when I come back in and um, uh, work on the T-shirt in detail. So we've got this kind of Y-shaped or V-shaped crinkle down the front there. And the cloth falls round this way. And by putting the, the paint on slightly wetter than I have been, you get all of these... Uh, little 
little brush strokes from the individual hairs of the brush showing and uh, it's a, just a nice way to create a little bit of texture and loads of little tiny contours and you know many of those may be removed later on in the painting but um, it's still still worth keeping in mind as a little technique then we can make more or less cylindrical marks around the upper arm or the upper sleeve and then obviously the got the rounded back here because he's leaning forward now you can see in places the, the watercolor marker because I diluted it first um, with the spray bottle some of that is bleeding into the paint and in some cases it's producing some quite nice interesting effects in other places arguably less so but I, I don't mind that too much in general um, it often adds a bit of a bit of interest to the image so um, we can now take a similar approach to the way we treated the face I'm just going to grab a healthy amount of the tinting white and mix that in to this pink I've got going already and that's probably not going to be bright enough for everywhere keep this keep the paint moist and that's not enough white so I'm adding loads more white just off camera here rather quickly so I want to just want to get going while um, the paint's still wet and again, I'm just looking at big shapes, so I'm not getting overly fussy about individual creases and folds and things, but we can try to capture the essence of it with a quick brush stroke here and there. So paint's very wet, so I'm just adding a bit more white so that it kind of mixes uh, as I apply the paint to tone it down. So we've got some nice subtle shading going on there. I'm going to have to come back in at a later stage and make the top of this back a lot lighter, but we'll, we'll get to that uh, in due course. And now we can add some shadows to the t-shirt as well. So for the shadow color, I'm just going to add some uh, red to that pale patch of pink I had before touch of the blue a little bit more blue I'm going to pick up some of that shadow color I used on the face as well just to make it a little bit more neutral I think I still need a bit more blue in there and let's let's see what this looks like when we put it down so again I'm going to keep the paint active with the water spray and there's quite a dark patch of shadow here so again it's not quite the right color it could do with a bit more blue in there but in terms of tone it isn't too bad so although I put some highlights in part of this area I'm actually just going to go over those and get the, the large shapes of shadow established in the t-shirt the shadows much darker here than what I'm actually applying but again I can come in and adjust that later on And it really needs to be a bit lighter than what I just put down there as well. So let's um, let's grab a bit of white, go back and back in the opposite direction. Just see if we can soften that a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure that's helped too much, but we'll we'll keep going with just a little patch of that there, a little bit on that sleeve.
and just add in some of the more subtle shadows. Now that I've got this colour on the brush, it's working reasonably well, working wet in wet. And that'll do for the initial treatment of the T-shirt. Although having said that, as often happens when I just step back from the painting, I think I'm going to put a bit of a lighter patch in there on top of the shoulder. It's not, it's not a massive adjustment and I'll need to lighten it further, but I think it was worth doing. So next thing is going to be the jeans. Now in the finished painting, I don't plan on showing much below the hands, but nevertheless, we need to give the arms something to be resting on. So let's just uh, spray the painting with water again. And I'm just going back to my big brush. I think I was using that before. I might have, might have, uh, yeah, I was using the big brush before. So I'm continuing with my big brush and uh, just coming in with pure ultramarine blue for the moment at least. So let's uh, let's block in a bit of the knee that's uh, showing there. And uh, then we've got the other leg over here. And I've just realized, actually, um, that I thought this was an error line coming down here. Um, and it might be a little bit out, but it's actually I should have blocked that in with um, the mid-tone that I began the painting with, you know, the flesh tone. Now, fortunately, I've kept a little patch of that mid-tone. That, that wasn't why I kept it, but um, I have got some left on the palette. So I'll fill that in in just a moment. OK, so now within that blue there are obviously highlights so we're just going to take a little bit of uh, white and pick off a corner of the patch of blue i've got going there so there's a quick highlight color and um, we've got some highlight on the knee here and down the edge of that leg and then it's a, perhaps a bit brighter again so a bit more white being added a little patch of highlight in there and in terms of highlights that's probably quite enough for now but um, some shadow colors definitely need to be added so I'm grabbing some more of the ultramarine blue and a bit of the burnt umber I think that's probably better for you guys to see if I put it there Bit more of the burnt umber and we'll see what that looks like when we put that down as a deep shadow color so this leg is uh, quite a bit darker than the other one so it's important i feel to develop the painting develop all parts of the painting at approximately the same rate because the colors you put when you put different colors next to each other the color you put down last affects the way the previous colors look so it's you know it's worth keeping that in mind i think rather than i think it's a better way to go than completely finish the face and then um you know then work on the arm and completely finish that okay so um while i was chatting away there i've just added a bit more of the burnt umber to that same mixture and so we've got the arm of the chair coming down here so it's not I mean there's not much showing really and the, the chair is rather bluer than I've just painted it but I, I just want to distinguish uh, between the chair and the jeans a little more than is perhaps there and then just mixing in some of the ultramarine blue and uh, a little bit of the white not much And then we can probably use a touch of that in here, where the other arm of the chair is just peeking through. And that chair colour, I think, 
would be quite a good base color for the hair. So let's um, let's begin the hair by adding some of that with the same brush. Now, when we put the paint on for the hair, rather than use smooth brush strokes everywhere, I feel a better way to go in this case is to just kind of tap the paint into place because that's going to create a little bit of texture. No, yeah, not much, but a little bit of texture, a little bit of a jagged outline, which is more in keeping with the texture of the hair that this chap has got. You know, as always, we don't have to get everything completely right with our first layer of paint. I mean, it, it would be nice, but um, uh, it's pretty rare in my experience. But um, as long as we get fairly close, then adjustments can be made later. So in terms of um, adding highlights now, what we can do is a little difficult to see what the color is in the... Uh, in the reference, but I, what I'm doing is I'm adding some of the ultramarine blue to what I've got on the brush and just letting it mix in with a little bit of that paler stuff and then keeping that hair that I've just painted fairly wet. We'll see if we can just add in a few highlights or subtle highlights. I'm not sure how well that's going to show up on camera. I think you're getting quite a bit of glare, aren't you? Let me just adjust the lighting a moment. There we go. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you. So um, just going to add a few touches of this blue. I mean, it's just to be clear, if, if you still can't see all that well, it's barely visible to me. All right. So that they're the subtle highlights. And what I'm doing now is adding uh, some, t some white to that lighter color. And then we're going to go in again now. I just pick out very, very simply at this stage. Whoops, I just hit the light. Um, just a couple of, you know, very simplified highlights. All right, well, we've got what I would call pretty much the first layer of paint in place for the figure. We've got a figure present, but I just need to deal with the background. Now, if I look at the reference, obviously light is bouncing around in, in different ways on the sitter. But predominantly, if I had to pick left or right, I would say the light is pouring in for the most part from top left. So we've got a grey background or kind of a bluey grey uh, in the reference. So I'm not going to deal with that kind of grid pattern or square pattern they've got going on there. But what I'm going to do is mix up a bluish grey with carbon black, a tinting white, just a touch of the ultramarine blue. And then I'm going to block in the background. I'm going to make this side on the sitter a little bit darker than on the right hand side, because having a darker background on this side is going to make everything look a little lighter here, even though the colour is the same pretty much left to right. I will be adding highlights in addition to what I've done to the sitter, of course. But for now, I'm just going to block in that background and then I'll check back in with you then. Well, I filled the background in and uh, I've let the painting dry completely. Now, I misspoke before. I said I was going to use carbon black when I mixed up this grey, but I actually used Mars black. I'm not actually sure if there's much difference, but um, I just thought I'd mention that. So in terms of how the painting's going, uh, I'm fairly happy with the general structure of the guy so far. There are a few areas I need to just watch out for. The, the shoulder isn't quite right. It's looking a little flat and it almost looks like this forearm won't fit into a shoulder of that size. So I need to deal with that. Obviously, there's a lot of work to do on the face. Um, and this line here on the forearm is certainly, you know, it's too bold and too heavy. So I, that, that's something I need to sort out for sure. Some of the original drawing lines um, 
are showing through the painting I've done of the sh of the shirt. I actually quite like the effect, and in particular, I quite like this the way the collar is working at the moment. But obviously, more to do there. So, I'm going to mix up some fresh paint, and um, then I'll get going. The next thing I want to address is the way the light is falling uh, on the t-shirt. So, I grabbed some of the tinting white, put in a bit of the cad red misjudged it I put in you know too much and I mean it wasn't very much but um, so I've just taken some more of the the white over here and mixed in what I had on the brush so it probably looks almost completely white on the palette but um, uh, I don't think that's that is the case it's, it's sort of slightly pinky but we'll see what it looks like when we come to the shirt here so um, Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about the painting was there are bursts of the orange marker showing through and I deliberately left a little bit here and here near the head and uh, if things work out I may end up leaving those more or less um, visible. I quite like the way those colours bounce off the other colours I've got but uh, I, won't, I won't hesitate to sacrifice them if necessary. So the colour I'm putting down now probably is a little bit too white. Um, it should be pinker, but uh, when it dries back, it may it may reveal some of the underlying pink. So I'm going to carry on with it uh, for now. then I'll just go back in to that pinker version that I had because uh, you know it's very light in the region that I just painted but it isn't quite so bright elsewhere and in fact I probably want to add just a little touch more of the red which I think again I've, I've added too much but we'll see what this looks like oh it's not too bad so going back to this shoulder that I mentioned, the problem, I'm just broadening the shoulder over to the left here and then bring that highlight down there on the left edge of that sleeve. Uh, I'm not convinced it's completely right now, but uh, it's a little bit better perhaps. I think when I put the very dark shadows in, it's going to be uh, easier to see what's going on. Right back, mixing back in with the the white again. And in terms of the highlights on the shirt, I'm going to leave that there. Now, while we have that pink on uh, on the palette, uh, we can look at the other areas of the painting where that colour might come in useful. So at the moment, our, um, our face is looking you know somewhat lacking in pink and there are definitely pink hues going on around the face so let's um, switch to a little filbert brush now and uh, if I can just get my 
water bottle working. There we go. It's probably a bit too much water, but um, it should be okay. So. What I'm going to begin by doing is putting a you know reasonably th thin layer on some of the shadow areas to kind of soften that rather strong brown that I've got. And then I can also add the same color or go a bit darker to just refine the shadows further as well. So as I'm blocking in the dark shadow here, I'm, par I'm partly regretting it because it's a bit too light, but this bit's okay. So what I'm going to do uh, in a moment is, is I'm going to lift off some of that paint that I've just put down. Now the colours I'm putting on the neck here aren't quite right, but in keeping with what I've been doing throughout so far, I'm just gradually working towards the final colour that we want. And then what I just said was I was going to lift off some of this paint, but I, I don't think I'm going to actually. What I'll do instead is uh, continuing with this little filbert as so I'll just add some blue to that mixture, a bit, a bit more of the red. That's perhaps a little bit closer in colour to what we want. Yes, that's a bit better. And obviously I'm going to have to come back in uh, and work up the eyes and make sure the likeness is improved. But that started to move things in the right direction. And I'm going to continue with that shadow colour on the arms as well. So
Now, in terms of my treatment of the hands, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to keep that pretty simple. So, I may not, you know, I'm, going, I'm definitely going to add more shadow than there is at the moment, but I don't think I'm going to go into a huge amount of detail because I think they, they're working reasonably well as they are. And then while I'm here with this colour, I'm just going to mix in some more white. Just a little touch of blue. And use this colour for some of the paler shadows that are... Um, occurring at various points around the sitter. Let's add some darker shadows here next. So grabbing some of the ultramarine blue and some of the cad red. And that's given me a nice dark purple. And uh, let's see what that looks like as a deep shadow colour on the shirt. So uh, let's start over here. So if I squint at the reference, we've got a crease which gets a little bit thicker there and then comes down here. There's one there as well. Now, that's looking a bit too on the blue side, I think, so I'm just mixing some more red into my purple. Let's come back over here now. Uh, so, it's really quite dark next to the left-hand edge of that arm. And if I squint, we've basically got, I mean, there are variations in the shadow, but we've basically got a triangle of dark shadow in there. And then things get rather lighter. So I'll come back to that bit in a minute. So for now, I'll just put a, a little line in there. It's very dark to the left of this sleeve. And I don't have to mimic, you know, every fold perfectly, but we just want it to look reasonably convincing as a piece of fabric. So. So 
So that's not too bad. And I think that's probably everywhere I can use that very, very dark color. Um, I suppose we could perhaps put just a little bit in here. A little bit on the arm as well. And then it's probably a bit too dark, but I think it'll be OK for this bit of shadow in the in the pocket. And there to the side of the neck. My brush is a little bit frayed. It's not giving me quite the clean line that I want, but you know, nevertheless, we'll carry on. Um, I'm just mixing some white in with the same color that I've been using. And there's quite a dark patch of shadow on the shirt there. Let's add a bit more red to the mixture. Still a bit too dark, a bit more white in the mix. And then we can come down here. And add that little shadow. And then back over to this area where it was uh, very dark in places. And I can use this intermediate colour that I've got on my brush to put in some of the lighter shadows. For some reason, uh, the paint today, I've never encountered this before with the interactives, but it's sort of, it's really quite sticky. It doesn't seem to be flowing in the way I would uh, normally expect it to for the amount of water I've got in the paint. So. Uh, but anyway, we can continue with this colour. And just selectively add shadows and you know really what I'm trying to do is think of what's the minimum amount of shadow that I can add really I'm just going to come back in and lighten those first shadow lines that I put down, but that didn't work all that well. So I'll just lift those off a moment. So to do that, I'm coming in with a uh, clean brush and uh, just working away at the paint. And because I left the, uh, the underlying layer of interactive acrylic uh, overnight, or maybe even for a day and a half. 
um, that shouldn't go anywhere now with the water spray bottle so you know it's not completely cleaned up but it's a lot I've removed you know the majority of it so we can come back now with uh, a bit of a lighter version because so I can always go darker again in a moment if necessary but I'll just put some indication of a line in there and there and then some of these purples I've been using for the shadows I think that's going to work quite well on some of the some of the face actually so as mentioned we'll go back in on the face with um, that same mid purple And while the colour I'm using, you know, it's not right for the eyebrows, it's not right for some of the darker shadows. It's a good way to just begin to put in some of the darker areas. So, for example, with the pupils, obviously he doesn't have purple eyes. But, um, you know, we're just, it's a good way to kind of put down a preliminary mark that you can correct and refine later. But I think um, after this layer of paint, I will revert next to more or less trying to bring, you know, the key areas to their, their sort of near finished state. So, you know, as I work away, I start out with the initial drawing and then the initial framework. Then I block in the big shapes to establish light and dark. And then as I'm doing now, work my way around the painting using a colour I'm, you know, I've got on the brush everywhere I can. But then it gets to the point where you say, OK, in order to finish this thing, what do I need to do? Now this little filbert's uh, great because you can use it to block in small shapes, but you can also use it edge on and get really quite a fine line if you're careful it's a bit like a flat well it is a type of flat brush but much like any flat brush you've got a beautiful combination of chunky mark making and quite precise mark making if you're careful with the brush it isn't as good as a you know a rigger or a, a liner brush for some stuff but um you know, it's still very, very adaptable. The painting's completely dry now, and I'm going to work on the face again. I've switched to my titanium white. And the mixture I'm using at the moment is mostly that white with some of the cad yellow and the cad red. And we'll begin to just make some adjustments to the shape of the face. And also add some 
brighter highlights to the face as well. Now, one of the reasons I chose this pose is that I'm gradually becoming uh, more and more interested when it comes to my portrait work in depicting sort of fleeting moments or poses or postures that are kind of in between stationary position so you know although he's sitting down in this particular pose he could be mid conversation i think in the video clip he was actually in the middle of applauding the artists having just seen their finished work and so i'm you know coming around to the idea that you know if you're going to use a photo if you don't have the sitter there and if you're going to use video footage or a photo, you know, or a photo or a still from the video, then, you know, why not, you know, use that for, you know, for a good reason. In other words, to capture something that would be almost impossible um, if you didn't have that technology. And having stepped away from the painting for a little bit before, you know, coming back to this current phase, I'm also thinking that my plan is to, you know, work up the, the head to a more finished state, which is obviously, obviously what I'm doing at the moment or working towards at the moment. Um, but in terms of the rest of the painting, I'm thinking I may... I may leave that more or less as it is, except for the background where I might try out a slightly unusual idea. We'll see, we'll see how I how I feel when I um, when I get the head done. So I'm just going to add a bit more of the cad red to that mixture to give me a more of a pinkish hue.
So the next thing I'm doing is adding a very bluish purple. So this is the ultramarine with a touch of the cad red and then quite a bit of the titanium white. And some of the shadows um, yeah there's, there's quite a quite a bit of blue in them so I'm just enhancing that and I can use that I think for the for the shadow in the ear and then also I'm going to I'm going to make the eyebrows darker than this eventually but um, putting this on top of the color I've already got there will start to move those eyebrows in the right direction in terms of tone. It's also quite a dark shadow under the nose there. And on the left of the mouth. That's probably enough of that colour for the moment. So back to a deeper purple now mixed up from the, the red and the blue that I've got with some of the titanium white. And one of the cool things about using the two different whites is, um, you know, as mentioned earlier, the, the tinting white is much more uh, translucent and the titanium is more opaque. But because of that, you, you know, say I mixed up exactly the same purple from just red and blue, and then I added tinting white to one and um, titanium white to the other, then you know I've effectively got two different colors there because when I put them down on the painting, I'm gonna get two different effects because of the differences in the translucency so it's really it's really a nice neat way of you know kind of doubling or at least doubling the colors you have available to you even if you're using a you know pretty limited palette um, as i am at the moment So I'm just mixing that same colour, what I've got left on my brush, in with the pale highlight colour that I used um, a moment ago for the for the highlights, funnily enough. And that's given me a paler purple or violet. which I feel is working reasonably well for the cast sh shadow on the neck. Just going to add a bit more of the titanium white to that same colour. And we'll keep the, the paint moist.
And then my usual trick, while I've got that on the brush, we'll add it in various places, you know, where I think it's going to work. So I'm going to leave the face for the moment and work on the hair next. And what I've done now is I've mixed up something approaching black with a roughly 60-40 mix of burnt umber and uh, or 3 to 2 is an easier way to say it, 60-40, 3 to 2. Um, burnt umber and the ultramarine blue, so slightly less of the ultra marine blue and the reason i'm coming in with this dark is i've got quite a lot of kind of subdued blending and sort of lighter darks in the hair already so my hope is that by adding this very deep dark color it's going to make those pop a little bit more and at that stage I'll be better able to judge if I need to enhance the highlights, you know, at all. So I'm still trying, you know, even at, at this relatively late stage of the painting, I'm still trying to look at the hair as a series of abstract shapes. But then when applying the, the paint, I am still being aware of the direction in which the hair is, well, it depends how you want to look at it, either sculpted or, or flowing. just having a little bit more water in the in the paint on my palette so I've just added some Now, being fairly mindful about the edges of the silhouette of the hair as I apply this dark colour, because if we sort of paint the edges, you know, with a little bit of care, but not too much, then, you know, you can summarise 
that kind of random nature that hair has, you know, the little frayed bits and things, without getting bogged down with trying to copy every single hair, which obviously, for the most part, is um, a very, very inefficient way of doing things. But I think at the moment that, um, you know, I'll be able to tell better when things have dried back. Oh, let me just change the lighting for you. Hang on a sec, because there's quite a bit of glare coming off there. There we go. Um, so I think we'll be able to, you know, see better when things have dried back. But um, I think adding this dark is having, for the most part, the, uh, the effect that I wanted. I will, I will still be adding some brighter highlights, but um, it's brought out some of the colour. So again, while we've got this dark on the on the brush, let's have a crack at the uh, the eyebrows. So I could do with a smaller brush, really, but we'll see if we can make it work. That one's not too bad. That one's not too bad either, but I definitely need a smaller brush for the eyes. So I've switched to a small round brush. And I'm going to use this for the eyelashes. Now in my reference, you know, the eyes, the irises, that they're almost black. Um, you know, it's one of the, the problems with using a screenshot of the TV screen. You don't really get the... You know, it's, you can't replace having the sitter in front of you. It's, you know, just, it's just not, not as good. Um, but what I'm going to do is assume the eyes are dark brown. And we'll, we'll deal with that in a bit. But there's that uh, top eyelid in. And then this eyelid, as it comes down to the left, slopes down quite a bit. And there's really quite a dark shadow where that eyelid disappears into the eye socket. So I'm going to stick with that same colour. And that line I put in has come out, you know, too thick, really. But um, I'm going to come back in with a different shadow colour now. So let's go back to, I'll mix what I've got in on my brush to one of the, sorry, I'll mix what I've got left on my brush to one of the deep, with one of the deeper purples from earlier. And we'll just fill that in. And then that same colour I can use along the top of the, the eyelid there. Under the eye. In the corner of this eye as well. Or, or the corner of the eye socket, rather. Go back to the nostril. And while I've got that colour on the go, we may as well work on the lips, on the mouth.
Now the color I used on the neck here, I've just mixed in with a lot more titanium white. And I'm going to use that for the beginnings of the whites of the eyes. So it's basically created an off-white. And I'm going to put this color in with relatively little regard for where I currently have the irises roughed, in, roughed out. So I'll come back over with the darker color in just a moment. So the eyes are going to look a bit weird for a couple of minutes. Um, and then hopefully we'll bring them back closer to reality. So I've now got pure burnt umber on my brush. And I'm looking not only at the shapes of the irises, but also the shapes of the little triangles of the white of the eye. Um, which are showing uh, either side of the either side of the iris. So the eye on the right isn't looking quite right yet. So we'll try and do a better job on the left one to begin with. Whoops, having said that, <laughs> just made a slight error there. Okay, but we've got, we've got something to work with there. So I'm gonna let those irises dry just for a bit. And I'm going to come back to the hair now. So I've taken that color I used for the white of the eye and just put a bit more of the purple into it. And then, you know, it's quite tempting to just kind of pop in these highlights all across the, the hair. I'm just going to grab a little bit more of the titanium white on my brush and just put a little bright spot within that, within a couple of these highlights. But when I look at the, the guy's head, I can see there are bluey highlights here and almost pale brown or orange highlights there. So I'm going to mix up a different highlight color now. So this next color may be too vibrant, but I thought I would stray away from reality a little bit. So this is basically just cad yellow mixed up with um, a little bit of the cadmium red. And although, you know, not exactly in keeping with reality, I don't, I don't mind it too much, uh, but I'll add a bit more red and a bit of the burnt umber. We'll use that just a few licks over here. And then there are some brighter highlights down there. So I'm going to go back to the pale blue with a lot of white in.
Next, I've got some cadmium red, not very much, with uh, mostly titanium white. And we'll add a little more white. To that same mixture, just to pick out a little bit of a highlight on the lip. And then a similar color, I'm just going to come in and add something with a bit more white to this lower lid here. And then the corner of this eye, the white of the eye, there's not enough showing. So that's improved things a little bit there. Just want to enhance the white of the eye on the other one there as well. Perhaps a little bit just there. Now there aren't really any highlights in the eyes showing, but given that most of the light's coming in from the, the left, you know, obviously it's bouncing around quite a bit, I think, in reality. I'm going to put just a little lick of white on the left-hand side of that iris, and then just a very small touch subdued highlight in the other one. So I have added just a few minor tweaks to the eyes and added a little bit of extra hair over there. But the main issue I picked up on was the, the, the shadow on the left side of this cheek isn't quite strong enough. So I'm just going coming back in with a much larger flat brush, and a dilute mix of um, one of the purples that I used earlier. Just pick out the edge of the face a little more there. Now the eyebrow on the left needs to be enhanced. So coming back in with the the near black that I mixed up. And the one on the right isn't quite big enough either. And then, you know, pulling back and just looking at the figure afresh. I want to 
deep in the shadow here. This is just, well, you know, something close to pure blue on my brush. Just change the line of this arm a little bit and, and darken in around here. Just adjust the edge of that sleeve so that it looks like it's going you know, around the arm a little more. And then the shadow here could do with being a bit darker. And I've just mixed up some of the tinting white and um, some of the blue. I'm more or less just going to dry brush that on to some of the highlight areas in the jeans. And I'll perhaps use that same colour on the arm of the chair. It's actually very bright on top there. Let's get a bit more blue in the mixture. Not enough. a bit better. So let's take a look at the finished painting. On the whole, I'm very happy with it. Um, it's not the best likeness I've ever achieved, but putting that aside, I feel I've captured a sense of life in the figure. And my favourite aspect of the painting is how can I put this without sounding weird? Sort of the way it's painted. So what I mean by that is, I'm, I'm not. That's not me bigging myself up. What what I mean is, um, I've described the face in more detail than the rest of the figure, and that's a fairly standard technique in art to bring focus and attention to the area of a painting that you want. But what I'm happiest about is the is the raw quality of the rest of the painting. And the fact that some of the initial drawing and the wrong initial drawing is showing through the T-shirt, there's something about it and the lack of detail in the hands, which it just really appeals to me. And one of the ideas I have going forward in terms of capturing the way people move is I might kind of do, I did some gestural drawing with the brush and the uh, marker pen in previous videos. So if you saw last week's video, I did some dances with a, an ink marker. And some of the gestural drawings, they really sort of capture something, I feel, in, in just a few marks. And so I like the idea of perhaps doing a portrait of someone, you know, in this kind of style. And then in the background, perhaps there are gestural drawings of them. So this guy's seated, perhaps walking towards the chair. Um, so that's kind of the, the general direction I'm going in. And there's a little bit more to it than that, but I'll, I'll talk about that in future weeks perhaps but anyway there's that painting done that's Jacob Jacob done hope you enjoyed the demo please remember to like comment and subscribe and I hope to see you next week for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show thanks very much for watching